What's up YouTube? In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you the basics of Adobe Illustrator. By the end of this course, you're gonna be able to easily create this poster that I have right here, a geometric poster design. It's super cool. You're gonna be able to create your own with your own colors, styles, fonts, all that stuff. I'm gonna teach you all the steps to get there. And so don't worry, even if you've never touched Illustrator before, I'm gonna give you everything you need to know in the course of these few videos. Before I jump into this video, which is gonna be talking about shapes and sizing, uh, I want to just give a quick encouragement and a quick challenge that as you're watching these videos, be thinking about your niche. That's an important thing as a creative is to find your niche, find your zone. What's something that you're really passionate about? What's something that excites you creatively that you wanna explore more? So we're gonna to touch a lot of different topics in this overview course. And so I want you to be thinking about what are the things that really interest you or draw your attention? And then from there, after the course, you can begin to explore those things and learn on your own. So that's my encouragement to you. Look for something that grabs your attention and then pursue learning that. Uh, it'll help you grow as a creative. So without further ado, let's jump into today's video. All right, so here we are in Adobe Illustrator. So if you haven't already, go ahead and download the file that's attached in the link in this video so you can follow along. I've got this whole thing built out for you so it'll make it really easy. I'm gonna go over the basic overview of Illustrator so you get familiar with some of the tools that we're gonna be using. So what's all happening here, all these different squares, this is known as your workspace. And so yours will not look like mine. By default, I've kind of crafted these to be how I want. If you would like to pull in any of these different panels that I have, just go to window and you have access to all of the panels. In other ways, if you click help and then you can search in there for whatever you're looking for. But for now, I'm just gonna dive right in. A few tools I wanna hit, the selection tool, this is super important. The shortcut for that is V. Selection tool is one you're gonna go to all the time. It's how you select and move items on your artboard. The other one that we're gonna be using is the rectangle tool. So in Illustrator and in really every Adobe product, if you look underneath the tool, you see this little corner mark here. That means that if I hold down, there's other tools hiding underneath it that are similar. That's why they're grouped together. So we have the rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, star, and flare. So I almost never use the flare tool, but I'm gonna show you through basically the rest of these. Uh, and before I finish that, we're also gonna talk a little bit about the pin tool, uh, which is one that's very tricky to use, but as you get used to it, it becomes more and more helpful. So without further ado, what we're gonna look at here is the different types of shapes. And I have this kind of built out for you so that you can um, play along with us and you know kind of keep moving um, with the video. So as I'm going, I want you to be creating rectangles, ellipses, polygons, and using the pen tool. And so don't just watch, practice as well, because that is the way that you're gonna learn. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over to our rectangle tool, which is M, is your shortcut. Make sure you're in layer one. And then I'm gonna zoom in. For me, that's uh, holding the shift or the space bar and the command together. You can zoom in. You can also do command plus or command minus. You're gonna kind of zoom in here and then simply just drag will give you some rectangles. So I can make a bunch different sizes, command Z to undo. So one, one thing I wanna make note of is that whenever I do create something, I click and automatically it drags from the top left corner. So you'll notice that this is not a square, it's a rectangle, it's kind of going everywhere. So the trick to make actual squares is to hold shift and it's gonna lock you in to equilateral proportions, which means that all the sides are gonna be the same. So there we go, that's an actual square. Uh, another way that you can create shapes is whenever you're using this tool, holding alt or option, and you see how it changes my cursor here, now when I create a shape, it's gonna create from the center as opposed to creating from the top left. So again, holding shift is gonna lock you into your square proportions, um, but again, you don't have to. So that can be really useful in different circumstances. Another way is that using that rectangle tool, if I click, it's gonna give me the option to actually type in exactly how big I want my rectangle to be. So I could do, let's say 75 by 85 click enter and there we go. It creates it exactly as I specified. You'll also notice that in the corners, we've got these little circles. That's actually how you can easily round your rectangles. Um, I'm not really worried about showing you the rounded rectangle tool because since you can do that with any rectangle, you can round the corners. It kind of makes that tool a little obsolete in my opinion. So that is making some simple rectangles. I'm gonna select all these. It's a little preview for the color lesson. You can click over here to your fill or to your stroke, remove that stroke, and then we're gonna make this a different color. Maybe we'll just make it black. Um, yeah, we'll stick with black. So there's some rectangles. Uh, that's kind of the few ways. So remember, you can draw from the top left, you can hold Alt to scale from the center, or you can click and you can specify a size. So pretty simple. Let's move on to ellipses. So in an ellipse, 
what you're going to do is hold over here and you can go to ellipse tool you can also click l that is your shortcut and so same thing when you're when you're starting to draw it's going to go from the top left corner and as you can see this isn't a circle until i hold shift and it locks it into those proportions so otherwise you can make any type of oval or ellipse another way you can do it same as the other one right is you hold alt and then you can create from the center which can be very helpful and same as the other one too you can click and there you go you can create it based on based on uh whatever pixel sizes you want so that's ellipses there's not much to tell there it's pretty straightforward um okay over here in polygons this is a cool tool so your polygon tool is one where you probably need to click first to see what you're getting so click and you can choose how many sides you'd like to create for a polygon and then the radius click OK, I've got a pentagon here. And actually this guy, I can scale these in, um, but if you notice this right here, I can actually change how many sides um, are, are happening in this polygon. So if I wanna make it a square, hexagon, so I could even drag over here, it's another great tool. Alt drag or option drag is gonna create a duplicate. And then I could make this a triangle if I wanted it to. Um, or I can go ahead and draw another one. You'll notice that whenever you draw these, they're always gonna, to, gonna create from the center. So you don't need to click Alt for these. That'll by default be how they're set up. Okay, and lastly is the pen tool. Now this one is one that people get really tripped up on, but I want you to just have fun with it, do your best. If it doesn't work, that's okay. So the pen tool shortcut is P. And what you can do is you make a click to start your first point. And then from there, you get a preview of what your line's gonna look like. So if you just click, you'll get a perfectly straight line, which can be useful. Now I can just keep clicking to create some kind of a shape. This will be really useful in our geometric poster. Um, but I can also, if I make my first line, I can hold shift like the other ones and it'll lock me in to either vertical, horizontal, or 45 degree angles, which can be very helpful as well. And the other thing that's really helpful on the pen tool, makes it really special and really useful, is if I hold when I click and drag, now I can create rounded shapes that don't match anything else. It's kind of some kind of like hair or eggplant or something. Uh, so you can create rounded shapes. So going back to the pen tool, the one other thing I wanna make note of is if you hold shift while you're dragging, it's gonna do that same thing, but it's gonna lock your, these are called handles. That's how you curve shapes with the pen tool. It's gonna lock those into a, um, like I said, vertical, horizontal, or 45 degree angle. So that one doesn't look pretty. Um, a challenge for you, see if you can make a circle. Uh, circles should have four points and the distance uh, between all the points and the handles should be roughly the same. So this is not gonna go so well for me. This is why it's a challenge. Okay, and if you ever wanna adjust things, clicking A will give you direct selection and let you just select that little point right here. And you can even increase the size of your handles. So, you know, that's kinda ugly, but that sorta looks like a circle. So give that a try, see how it goes. All right, so uh, Command uh, Zero is gonna bring you back to the full size of what we're looking at here, bring you to the artboard. So the last thing I wanna teach you before we move on is how to scale objects. So if you click on any of these objects and you click the S key, you're gonna open your scale option. So then you can actually scale in or out the size of your object. Note that holding Shift is gonna lock your proportions again. Um, and one other thing to make note of, uh, let's do it over here in the polygons. So if I want to scale a polygon up to maybe this corner, right now I have this, this anchor point or it's the scaling point. And what I can do is before I actually start scaling, if I click again, I can change where that point is. So now it'll scale in from that spot, which is really helpful and really useful. So you can choose where you're scaling things in. By default, if you deselect and click S again, it's gonna do the center of the shape. All right, but give those things a try. Try to make all these shapes and try scaling and moving some of these things around uh, to get used to the scaling and the shape tools. All right, that's it for this video. Check out the next one where we're gonna be talking about how to use color and spicing all this up. I'll see you in the next one.